Father, we thank you for this time. We do bless your name for the privilege of speaking your word. Lord, we know that you are here by your spirit. And you look at everything we're doing. And you want the very best. And you want us to persevere in everything you have given us until we see you face to face. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you help us to remain faithful to your word, to the revelation you have given us until the end of time. Give us your grace, preacher, and listeners to remain in the center of your will all the days of our lives. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said. Here the word of the Lord commands us and exhorts us and encourages us that if there is anything essential, anything important, anything we need to hold on until the end of time, it is the old landmark. And he puts it in the singular. He bundles everything together. Everything we've learned, everything we've heard, all the revelation of the word of God. He tells us, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said is talking about the sacrifice of our fathers those the people that have been called by god and when you think about the revelation of the word of god it's coming all the way from moses all the way from the psalmist david all the way coming from abraham all the way coming from all the prophets and many of those prophets refer to there as our fathers. They suffered with their lives. They laid down their very lives because of the word, the revelation the Lord gave to them. And then the Lord is saying, those fathers in the faith, and those heroes of faith, and those great men and women of the past, they have laid the foundation. And they've given us the landmark. And it says, remove not those ancient landmarks. These new days and these modern times, there are people that will not cherish the old landmark. They like to replace it. And the Lord is saying, no, no, not at all. It must not be done. It should not be done. It should not be done intentionally. It should not be done carelessly. It should not be done by forgetfulness. It should not be done because of the difficulties or challenges we have. There are some of the words we read in the Bible. And they are challenging. And sometimes they might be difficult. And it says, just because you have some challenges or difficulties, that doesn't mean that you will remove any of the ancient landmarks in fact it tells us again in chapter 23 of verse 10 chapter 23 and verse 10 remove not the old landmark it says that again it says the old landmark is being watched over by the lord himself he made those patriarchs of old those preachers of old and those prophets of old he made them to search the old landmarks and he said, remove them not. He says, peradventure, there are people that will want to remove them. What do you do with them? Chapter 24. Chapter 24 and verse 21. It says, my son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Meddle not with them that are given to change. There are people that they say they are fed up with the old landmarks and they want to change they want to modify and they want to mutilate the word of god it says don't agree with them don't partake with them don't share with them 
Don't befriend them. Don't support them. Meddle not with them that are given to change. You come to the New Testament and in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear unto many. Take it unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. It says, Your eternity is at stake. And the eternal welfare of the people you are preaching to is at stake. If you do not keep on to the old landmarks, meditate and think through and look at the implication of the word of God that comes to you. And now you have to pass that word across without diminishing from it and without adding unto it. The old landmarks in modern times. There are three things we are going to consider. Number one, the foundation number two the falsehood number three the faithfulness number one the foundation and doctrine of the master's landmarks the master himself the lord himself our savior himself has laid the foundation he has given us the masterpiece he has given us the landmarks and it goes beyond Moses, goes beyond Abraham, and goes beyond David. It goes beyond all the prophets of old because he is the word personified. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father is full of grace and full of truth. And he said, if you continue in my word, not the word of Moses, if you continue in my word, not that of Abraham or David, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. He laid the foundation, the foundation and doctrines of the master's landmarks point number two the falsehood and danger of modern day liars false prophets are liars false teachers are liars the people that are to the word of god are liars those who supply from the word of god are liars those who change the old landmarks and they want to replace it by the tradition of man by the teaching of man, by the doctrines of denominations, those are liars to the Lord. The falsehood and the danger of modern day liars. Number three, the faithfulness of disciples with ministerial loyalty. The faithfulness of disciples with ministerial loyalty. Come to number one, the foundation and doctrine of the master's landmarks in first corinthians chapter three first corinthians chapter three i'm reading from verse 10. first corinthians chapter three we're looking at verse 10 according to the grace of god which is given unto me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builders thereupon, thereon. But let every man take heed how he builders thereupon. Paul the apostle said, the foundation matters a lot. He said, according to the wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. If you are not building on that foundation, you are not wise. If you don't have that same foundation, you are not wise. If you build on another column, on another landmark on another piece of land except the one christ himself has laid down you are not wise look at verse 11 
for all the foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ the Lord himself laid the foundation and the Lord himself is the foundation Jesus is a savior that's a foundation Jesus is a sanctifier that's a foundation Jesus is our healer that's a foundation Jesus is our power that's a foundation Jesus is the coming king that's a foundation Jesus the sanctifier the baptizer in the Holy Ghost that's a foundation everything we believe everything we should teach everything we stake our lives upon is a foundation of Christ it tells us in Luke chapter 6 Luke chapter 6 reading from verse 47 Luke chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 47 here the Lord himself tells us he laid the foundation he gave the message he declared the truth and he tells us truth sufficient sufficient for salvation and sufficient for sanctification and sufficient for sustenance and sufficient to take us unto heaven Luke chapter 6 and I'm reading here from verse 47 whosoever come to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them I will show you to whom he is like it's like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock laid the foundation on a rock have you noticed the foundation of christ's message have you noticed what he said have you noticed what he proclaimed are you have you noticed what he gave us he gave us the totality of the word we need for us to get to heaven and for us to make it on that final day we'll make it in jesus name i said you will make it in jesus name he has given us that word he has given us the truth as we look at the word of jesus because he says over here he that heareth my sayings what are his sayings he says repent and believe ye the gospel he preached repentance that's foundational he said except you repent ye shall all likewise perish he said it's not just religion it's not just that i'm coming to church i believe i believe i believe what do you believe he said except you repent ye shall all likewise perish he spoke about faith he said except you believe that i am he the only way to salvation the way the truth and the life ye shall in no wise get into the kingdom of god he is the way he is the truth is alive is the way that leads to the father do you remember he spoke about restitution when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that somebody has ought against you you don't uh, say well that doesn't matter that's his feeling that's what he feels about it i will still offer my gift anyhow he taught restitution is a taught restoration he said you leave your gift there at the altar and you go back to him and you apologize and you make right and reconcile with the offended brother and then you come back to offer your gift it taught repentance it taught faith in christ it taught restitution it taught righteousness and it taught about salvation it said i am come to seek and to save the lost that's salvation he said accept your righteousness shall exceed and go beyond the righteousness of the scribes of the pharisees ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of god he taught purity of heart holiness sanctification blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god it says if you forget all that foundation and you're doing church no repentance you're doing church no restitution you're doing church no faith in christ you're doing church no righteousness you're doing church no holiness no purity no sanctification he said it is useless you must build on the foundation he taught water baptism go ye 
into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. You are born again. You must be baptized in water. That's the foundation Christ laid. Didn't he tell us? He gave them the bread. He gave them the wine. And then he said, do this in remembrance of me. The Lord's Supper. He taught that. What did he say about marriage? He said, look at this one. In Luke chapter 16, he taught marriage, husband and wife, one man, one wife, until death do us part. Luke chapter 16. I'm reading here from verse 18. It tells us in Luke chapter 16 and verse 18. See what he said about marriage. Whosoever a bishop, a pastor, whosoever a seminary done, whosoever educated man, whosoever illiterate man, whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another, committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband, committeth adultery. You see, that's what he taught. And he said, that is the foundation. And Paul the Apostle coming on said, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and let every man, every preacher, every prophet, every evangelist, every minister, every worker, let everyone take heed how he buildeth thereupon. It will surprise you. And it will jolt you to understand immediately jesus spoke about that marriage and he spoke about no divorce and he spoke about stay with your wife until you die he spoke about hell look at verse 19 and there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and found that then he said he feared sumptuously every day and the other was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of souls, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the masters, from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls, and it came to pass that the beggar died, and he was taken by angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died also, and was and he was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He has spoken about marriage. And you know the problem in the world is like many people in the world, they don't want to think about the correct way in marriage, and the right way in marriage, and the word of the Lord concerning marriage. But immediately Jesus spoke about adultery. And he spoke about that or clean life of a man leaving the wife marrying another and of a woman leaving her husband and marrying another he spoke about hell not only that he spoke about evangelism and he gave that great commission to the whole church and all the members and he said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and do you know that he spoke about backsliding he said in luke in um, John chapter 15, I'm reading here from verse 6. In John chapter 15, verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Of course, it talks about the very fact that you need to persevere to the very end. He said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He spoke about hell more than any other person in the Bible. And then he spoke about heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself so that you'll be with him forever. And so you find what he has spoken about. And because he spoke about all this, he says, anyone 
that will build must build on that foundation come back to luke chapter 6 luke chapter 6 and we're reading here from verse 47 luke chapter 6 reading from verse 47 it says in verse 47 still building on that foundation whosoever come to me and hear it my sayings all that he has said all that he has taught all that he has speech and doest them i will show you to whom he is like he is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood came arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock verse 49 but he that hears and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth there are people they don't worry about the foundation they're not bothered about the landmarks repentance they don't know what that means restitution no they'll never say sorry to anybody they might hurt you they might disobey the word of god they might deny cardinal things in the word of god and you challenge them and you call them to it they never will apologize and they never will change it says all those people they hear the word of the lord and they do them not they hear about being purified about being sanctified they're not going to do it they are building the religious a religious sanctuary a religious house a religious edifice and yet they will not obey the word of god it says the flood will come and beat against that house and the stream will come and beat vehemently against that house immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great irreparable so the lord is telling us then build on the foundation teach what he has taught preach what he has preached stand on what is huge on in matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost listen to this verse 20 teaching them teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you have you taught repentance since you've been teaching others have you taught restitution since you've been teaching others and if you're writing and you're teaching by not writing do you ever write on restitution or do you circumvent do you avoid do you water it down because you yourself there are some areas of restitution in your life to be made to the church and to your leaders you have not done that and because of that you don't feel at ease to write about restitution about righteousness in what righteousness righteousness that is transparent and righteousness in the day and in the night but we circumvent we go around we gloss over it and we're just teaching religion but the lord is saying that will teach all things whatsoever he has commanded are you confident in teaching sanctification holiness of heart holiness of life holiness at home holiness in the place of work holiness everywhere teaching them all things whatsoever i have commanded you and since when did you teach the baptism in the holy ghost are you baptized in the holy ghost yourself do you have the power of the holy ghost in your life how can you declare what you don't have how can you uphold what you don't what you have not experienced you must experience it it is after experiencing it you're able to tell other people have you spoken about hell 
for how many years now have you not mentioned hellfire that all those who die in sin they have the danger of going to hellfire do you believe that yourself do you know that yourself where is it in the bible how can you convince other people with bible teaching that there's hellfire at the end of a life of sinning jesus taught it didn't only teach about heaven he taught about hell teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo on the basis that you do that on the basis that you are faithful to the word and lo i am with you all way even to the end of the world and somebody there will say amen john chapter 8 john chapter 8 I'm reading here from verse 30. John chapter 8. We're reading from verse 30. And he spake these words, as he spake these words, many believed on him. But he said, that's not the edge of the road. As he spake these words, many believed on him. He said, don't go yet. There's still something more. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continue. If he continue, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Point number two, the falsehood and the danger of liars. Modern day liars. Let's look at Job chapter 24 Job chapter 24 we're looking at it from verse 2 Job 24 we're reading from verse 2 in verse 2 here is what it says some remove landmarks they violently take away the flocks and they feed thereof it's talking about the people now to take away the landmarks of the scripture take away the landmark of christ take away the landmarks for the church for the flock of god and then they violently take away the minds of the people from christ that the minds of the people no more are centered on christ the minds of the people are violently rested away taken away and removed from the Lord and from the watch of the Lord. Attention then comes on other things. Maybe attention comes on them. Maybe attention comes on false doctrine. Maybe attention comes on false hope. They violently take away the flock and they feed themselves. You'll be found a liar before the Lord if you do that. Taking away the landmarks of the word of God of the bible so that you can attract attention to yourself or to false teaching or to tradition zephaniah chapter 3 zephaniah chapter 3 we're reading from verse 4 in zephaniah chapter 3 verse 4 our prophets are light and treacherous persons our priests are polluted the sanctuary they have done violence to the law. They do violence. How have they do violence? They violently misinterpret the word of God. They appear bold against the Lord. Bold against sound doctrine. Bold against the church. And they violently misinterpret the word of God. And they say, that's it. We have gone out of the way. And we're inviting every other person to come out of the way but you know what the lord is saying the lord is saying that such people that remove the old landmarks judgment will be upon them ezekiel chapter 13 ezekiel chapter 13 see what these liars do see what these false prophets do see what these false teachers do this see what these backsliding preachers but leading teachers see what they do they don't have the grace of god in their lives to live according to the word of god and because of that they have to tone down because of that they have to change 
Because of that, they have to modify the word of God. Ezekiel chapter 13. What do you need from verse 22? Ezekiel 13, verse 22. It says, Because with lies ye have made the hearts of the righteous sad. When you listen to them, if you're righteous, you're sad. When you listen to them, if you have any kind of concern for the glory of God, you're sad because of their lies, because of their false doctrine, because of their misinterpretation of the word of God. Because with lies, with false doctrine, with manipulation of a scripture, because with lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. Such preachers are not walking with God. Such preachers are not walking in line with the Lord. The Lord says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. They're not in agreement with that. And the Lord says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. They're not in agreement with that. And they're going to say something. They still read the Bible. They read those same verses. And then they will twist it. They put it upside down. And then they make jest of it. And they laugh. And when they do that, if you're righteous or there, your heart is pinched. It saddens you. Because with lies ye have made the righteous, the heart of the righteous, sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked. Strengthen the hands of the backsliders. If you are a child of God, you say you are a child of God. Let's say, for example, you're ministering. If you're ministering and you make the backsliders, uh, the backsliders happy, and you make the backsliders cheer you, and you make the backsliders say, yes, that's it. I agree with you. And they, never, they are not convicted of their sins. They do not look at their evil because you are a backsliding minister yourself. And you are making the backsliders happy. Making the sinners happy. And you turn the word of God upside down. Those are the modern day preachers. That's what they do. They strengthen the hands of the wicked. That he should not return from the wicked, his wicked way by promising him life. And you think about everything you do in the church. You think about in your fellowship. The people there who are not born again. When they listen to you. The backsliders there. They really congratulate you. Are they happy with you? And do they say wonderful. You are not like you know so and so. And if you are a, maybe a zonal leader. Or you are a local pastor. A church location pastor. How do you preach? What do you tell the people? The backsliders and the sinners. Do they come in and go back the same way as they came? Any area you are ministering in the church. When you finish your ministry. The sinners there. Are they happy or convicted? The backsliders there. Are they happy or convicted? If your ministry is not convicting backsliders. It's not convicting sinners. And you are in agreement with them. And they are in agreement with you. And you make them remain sinners. And you make them remain backsliders. You are not serving the Lord. That's what it says. It says you are a liar. You are promising life to the people that are living in sin. That's why all those liars, there's going to be judgment of God upon them. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, what are you doing from verse 13? Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're reading from verse 13. Jeremiah 23, verse 13. I have seen folly, foolishness in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. They caused the people of God to go astray in our ministry must not cause people to go away from holiness, away from righteousness, away from readiness for the kingdom of God, readiness for Christ's coming. If you're ministering and the people don't see anything in your ministration to make them ready and to make them prepared for the kingdom of the Lord, you're not serving the Lord aright. It says in verse 14, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem and horrible sin. They commit adultery 
and they walk in lies. They, they strengthen also the hands of evil doers that none does return from its wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitant thereof as Gomorrah. And of course, if they are like that, the same judgment that came upon them will come upon uh, that came upon the Sodomites will come upon them as well. Second Peter chapter 2 second peter chapter 2 what do you do from verse 1 second peter chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 1 it tells us in chapter 2 verse 1 talking about these false prophets talking about these deceivers talking about these people that do not have the glory of god at heart and do not have bringing sinners out of sin and making backsliders to return unto the Lord. They do not have that in heart. They have another agenda. They have another plan. They have another purpose. The false prophets, the false ministers, the false teachers, and their false believers. They're not real believers. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But... There were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, privately shall bring in damnable heresies. Privately, that's what they do. Behind the coaching, that's what they do. They bring in damnable heresies. Things different from the word of God, from the teaching of the word of God. Even denying the Lord that bought them, they deny the price of salvation. They deny the way to eternal life. And they deny the Lord that bought them. And they bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. You're seeing that nobody will follow. Don't worry yourself, pastor. We know the truth. We know the right thing. Let a false prophet preach their message. And let false teachers preach their message and let false ministers minister no problem we know the truth no not at all many shall follow the pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of through and through covetousness shall they with faint with faint with faint words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. It says that such people eventually they come under the judgment of God. Perdition comes to them. You cannot teach other people, lead them to hell and go to heaven yourself. You cannot destroy the lives of other people and then God will build you up. The grace of God that you have not allowed other people to have, you cannot have. God is a faithful God. You cannot send other people to hell, multitudes to hell, and then God takes you to heaven. The people of the world may call you any name, a bishop or bishop or prophet, overseer, whatever name, it doesn't matter. If you lead people to hell, you go to hell, you follow them to hell yourself. Look at verse 19. While they promise them liberty, they're promising other people be at liberty there's no danger at all do whatever you want to do while they promise other people liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage if you ever come by adultery privately Whatever you come to shout over here doesn't matter. You overcome by fornication privately. Whatever you are shouting in the public doesn't matter. And you overcome by drunkenness or you overcome by temptation. Whatever you come to say in the public matters not at all. You are a slave of sin, a slave of evil, and a slave of the flesh. Look at verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, and through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Instead of growing, 
Instead of coming to the positive side, they're going to the negative. Instead of going up, they're going down. Instead of increasing, they're losing the grace of God in their lives. And the latter age is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. To turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the so the pig the swine that was washed to a wallowing in the mire and that's why the lord is warning us come back to the foundation and come back to the revelation of the word of god as taught by jesus christ himself revelation chapter 21 Revelation chapter 21, we're reading from verse 8. But the fearful, you're so fearful you cannot emphasize the word of God. You're looking at the faces of men and the faces of women. Because of that, you won't talk about repentance. Because of that, you won't talk about restitution. Because of that, the fear of man, you'll not talk about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and all, he tells us, are murderers, and all mongers, those are adulterers, fornicators, the fleshly people, those who lost, and sorcerers, witchcraft, familiar spirit, and idolaters, and all liars, private liars, pulpit liars, those who come to tell lies on the pulpit, those who take the word of God, they turn it upside down. They misinterpret. They misapply. They are liars. Pulpit liars. Private liars. Public liars. It says, all liars shall have their part in the lake with bonnet, with fire, and with brimstone, which is the second death. What's the Lord calling us to? If he has shown us a foundation, what's the Lord calling us to? He's calling us to faithfulness. If you're a disciple, you need to have loyalty, faithfulness, commitment, single-mindedness towards the Lord. And this faithfulness is to be seen first in the ministers. In this faithfulness of disciples with ministerial loyalty. First Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 4. What he did from verse 2, moreover, it is required, his stewards, that a man be found faithful. It's required in pastors that a man be found faithful. It's required in church leaders that a man be found faithful. You see, maybe you are faithful when it comes to every area of the word of God, as long as it doesn't, it doesn't touch your family. For example, we know that the Lord cannot use sinners to reach out to other sinners and to bring other sinners into the kingdom of God. Maybe you happen to be a pastor and your wife happens to be the women leader over there. But you cannot be faithful in that area because you know that your wife, if your wife were another woman, you will say, my sister, please go and sit down. You need to pray because, you know, your wife fights. Your wife gets angry. Your wife tells lies. Your wife does all these things. And because she's your wife, you're not faithful. You leave her there. She's leading people that are more righteous than herself. She's leading people that are more obedient than herself. Maybe it's your son. Your son is playing the keyboard. And your son is doing this and that. And you know your son is stealing. You know your son is smoking. You know your son is not living according to the word of God. And you say, my son, this thing you are doing is not good. You know now, if I stop you, because I should stop you, the public will be asking, what happened, what happened? I don't want to expose you. So, my son, be careful. 
this is not good. Don't allow me to deal with this sin with the Bible. You are not faithful. You are partial. If you saw the children, you say, come on here. Don't you know the word of God? The people that serve me will lead righteous lives. And if you are not born again, a sinner cannot lead another sinner. If a blind man leads another blind man, they'll fall into the ditch. Hey, you know how to quote scriptures when it applies to other people, other children. And when it's your child, you cannot apply the Bible. You're not faithful. It is required, it still was, that a man be found faithful. I pray you'll be faithful in Jesus' name. Am I talking to somebody there? You'll be faithful in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're looking at verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me. Among many witnesses, the same commit thou to what kind of men? I said, what kind of men? Faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others also? There's no tribalism here. And there's no sexualism here. And there's no favoritism here. You commit to faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others also? Now we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, choose for you. You are free to marry a believer. But let's say, for example, you are a pastor. Let's say, for example, you are an overseer. Let's say, for example, you are a high leader in the church of the living God. And you want to marry. You're free. Marry anybody you want to marry. But if you marry a new convert... If you marry somebody who doesn't know the doctrines of the Bible, if you marry somebody who cannot stay firmly that this is the way what she therein, if you marry somebody who is a novice and she herself is still trying to understand, my husband tell me, this institution, what is it in the Bible? You're still trying to help her. My husband tell me, what is he that says, if you're angry with your brother, with your sister, and you call her raker, thou fool, you'll be in the danger of hell. My husband tell me, what is he that and it says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. She doesn't know. And then because she's your wife, automatically she becomes a woman leader the bible doesn't say that the bible doesn't say that if you marry a novice if you marry somebody who is a new convert you're free to marry once you marry a believer but if that person does not know the way of the lord and the way of righteousness you cannot put her over all those women in your district over those women in your group over those women in the region or the women in the stage that's what he's saying over here the six you have heard and the six you have learned you commit them to faithful men and faithful women who shall be able having ability to teach having understanding to teach having the authority of life to teach that's what the word of God says. And if you're going to be faithful, that's a thing to do. It's not just that, you know, he's a leader, I'm a leader, everybody's a leader. And then we come to the pulpit and we cannot teach the people the word of God. Get those faithful people, the people that accept the word, and the people that live by the word that will teach other people with conviction. And they back it up with the kind of life they live. We're looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And we're looking at verses 33 and 34. You're not uh, choosing somebody from your tribe. We're from the same locality. We speak the same local language. We're from the same local government. When did you come? When did you come to the church? I came last, uh, last year. And what do you know? I'm born again. You are born again. I don't have any of my people, any of my countrymen uh, as a pastor, as an overseer. All right, get ready. You, they will call you for question and answer. Uh, for region overseer, they'll ask you this question, this question, this question. Begin to write that now. If they ask this question, give this answer. If they ask this question, give this answer. You're a politician. You're not a Christian. You're not faithful. You're not there to serve the Lord. 
You're there to serve your tribe. You're there to, to be tribalistic. And God will remove you out of that place. Everybody give me a good amen there. Yeah. Psalm 119, I'm reading verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Here is consecration. Here is commitment by somebody that said, I know that is the right way. I know that that is what to do. Teach me, O Lord, your way. And I will keep that way to thee and give me understanding. And I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. We don't serve the Lord with, uh, you know, half-heartedness uh, service. But we serve the Lord with all our heart. And we make a commitment to the Lord. Look at First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. Here we're reading from verse 13. First Kings chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 13. It says in verse 13, And the messenger that was gone to call Micah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king. With one mouth, false prophets are prophesying lies unto the king and he said it with unity and let thy word i pray thee be like the word of them and speak that which is good here is a false prophet trying to influence uh, michael and michael said as the lord liveth, what the lord says unto me that will i speak if any, if you're a faithful person, somebody, a backslider, comes to tell you to walk in the way of backsliding and to say the wrong thing and to do the wrong thing, you should be able to say, no, I'm committed to the Lord. I've surrendered my soul, my heart, my life, my future, my destiny unto the Lord. I cannot do that. And when you commit yourself totally to the Lord like that, then you know that you are going to do, you are going to say only what he has said. It tells us it's only when we hold on and we hold to that truth until the very end. That's how we can be saved and that's how we're going to see the Lord on that final day. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 3 reading from verse 6. Here is what the Lord is telling us because he expects us to be faithful until the very end. Hebrews chapter 3, we are reading from verse 6. For Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope from a firm unto the end. All you have learned, if you are faithful to it until the very end, and you hold it firm, and you will not let it sleep, it will not slip away from your hand, then you'll be a partaker of that kingdom of God. Verse 12, take each brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You were in the Lord before you've been in the Lord. And you've been serving the Lord, you are saved. You've done your restitution. You were sanctified. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you have been faithful to the Lord. Hold that fast to the end. Verse 13. But exhort one another daily. Whilst it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the, dece the deceitfulness of evil. The deceitfulness of the things of the world. It says in verse 14, For ye are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the very end. That's what the Lord is calling us to. He's saying, hold it fast. Hold it fast until the very end. All the doctrines we have learned. All the manner of life he has revealed unto us. Hold it to the very end so that you will not lose your soul. You will not lose your reward. You will not lose your crown. Revelation chapter 22. 
Revelation chapter 22 from verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they which do his commandments. Not those who rebel, not those who disobey, not those who backslide, not those who look down at the word of God, not those who change the convictions of the word of God, not those who lead other people astray. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. I may enter in through the gate into the city. Verse 15. For without, outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the mongers and the murderers and the idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth these words, the words of these, of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written therein in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. After saying that, he now reminds us, it's coming again. And you need to be ready for his coming. It's coming again. You need to hold fast the watch of God that you have learned about repentance, about restitution, about righteousness, about the purity of heart, about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, about the responsibility of the believer. Hold that fast. Don't change. Don't modify. Don't take away from the word of God. Don't add. Verse 20 now. He which testified these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let the Lord be visible spiritually to you. And you are thinking about the Lord, about the watch of the Lord, about your commitment to the Lord. Don't play religion. Don't just think about religion. Religion has no value in the sight of the Lord. You're not here because of a man, because of a woman. You're here because of the Lord. And you want to give your life totally to the Lord. Would you please honor the Lord and stand up? Thank you. And commit yourself to the Lord. And say, Lord, I've had your word. I will be obedient to the word you have taught me. Open your mouth and pray.